Okay, welcome back. Experiment number two. May the Lord be with you. And this is the tortoise and the hare, but I had to give it a much more generic type name. So it's also called, it's called, uh, it's called uh, <laughs> one dimensional uniform motion. All right, so over on the table over here, if you were doing this on campus in lab, you would go out in the hallway and I give you a long tape measure. And this is one of the cars right here. So this is the tortoise car right here. All right, and this is the hair car. All right, also if I turn them around, they will cross at some particular point. Notice they're both going at uniform motion. Woo, get back here. Until something like that happens. All right. So anyway, uh, we would go ahead and measure the motion of each of these cars, and then your instructor will give you what are called initial conditions. So when you go ahead and plot that on your graph, and, and uh, when you write up what you think your testable question is, you'll then discuss that in, in class and put that part together. So I'm really not gonna talk about that directly right here. So when you read the testable question in LoudCloud, you'll have looked at the video, see basically what the setup is and how the measurements are gonna be made, but then you're gonna decide what relationships you're gonna be looking at and how you're gonna explain different things. For instance, these two cars are identical but they're moving through space at totally different rates. How come? Okay, and this is something you can change. So I want uniform motion. How can I make this thing undergo uniform motion? Should be, should be thinking about that in, in your design for the experiment. All right, so uh, in this experiment, you're not gonna use these cars unless you happen to have them at home. If you have two of those cars at home, you could use that. What you're gonna use is just some ball you can find at your house. It doesn't matter as long as it's, what's nice is it's smooth and it's hard, okay, and it's round. Now if it's a solid ball, uh, then you'll, you can test uh, its speed in, a, uh, in the lab, you'll see how you can test the speed, but you'll have to know if it's round or not. And uh, because if you use like a basketball, it's not solid. It only has a mass shell around the outside. This is an eight ball right here. This is also a solid ball. And what you're gonna do is, first of all, I'm gonna make sure the table you're on is flat. So you can see right here, you see the balls rolling off the edge of the table. So you could go underneath the table here and then just put some paper or something underneath the wheel. So for a certain amount of time, if it doesn't move very far, then you know it's pretty flat and horizontal, okay? All right, that's the first part. The second part is you need a scale. And so your scale needs to be pretty much in the same plane as the motion's gonna be. Now it might be up off a little bit, but you can see the motion's gonna go like that across the table here. And then you're gonna videotape it using your iPhone. Now, if you don't have an iPhone, you can use another phone, but I have an iPhone, so that's the one I'm most familiar with. And most people, like in your group, I would, I would bet that three out of four of you have an iPhone. What do you think, Tom? At least half. At least half, <laughs> at least half. Okay, now if you go to settings, you can actually set um, how many frames you want your video camera to take uh, per second. So there's a bunch of different possibilities. And for instance, if you want 1080, uh, you could do it at three, 30 frames per second. If you want 1080 at 60 frames per second. Actually, the more frames, the better. Okay, more frames, the better. So that's pretty good. There's even, if you want 4K at 30 frames per second, you could pick that. You can also pick slow-mo video, and that's 720p uh, at 240 frames per second. 
That's overkill. That is definitely overkill. Then you're gonna take the, uh, when you take your camera, camera video, you're gonna take it to a website where you, can uh, where you can analyze the data using what's called video analysis, all right? And then you can set the frame rate that you chose on the, on, the, uh, on the program, and then it'll take care of the time between pictures. You can also skip frames. So like, let's suppose you've got so much data, so you only wanna see like every five frames. You can set that. So every time you click on the ball in your video camera, your video uh, from your camera, every time you click on it, it'll jump to five frames in the future, five frames into the future, and so on. And you can set all that on your video analysis. So you need a tortoise type motion. And you see in this case, you could, you could develop like a little ramp. All right? You can have a little ramp to roll the ball down. So when it comes down to the table, it's going at a certain speed. Okay, so like you get yourself a book or something like that, tilt it, and then you can get a nice speed like that. But what you gotta do is wherever you let go of it, uh, you really just need to measure the height to the table where you let it go. If you measure that distance right there, and then you also measure uh, how far it traveled down this little ramp, you can get a value for the speed of the ball that's independent of the experiment you're doing. Okay, and that's all on the lab sheet to show you how to do that. But anyway, if I tilt this higher, you see it's gonna have a higher speed. If I release it from the same spot, it's gonna come down. And then you just videotape this nice motion so you can just keep doing it until you get a nice, you get a nice um, roll. Uh, you could use like a clipboard. Clipboards are nice because they're not very thick. Or a cookie sheet. You know, you're engineers, so you guys have to come up with how you're going to do it. But, you, but remember, you also need this. Good to have this in the background so the ball goes in front of it because you need to tell the scale uh, to the video analysis program. And this is like a half a meter right here. So if you use like an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, you could have 11 inches right here and just tape and fold it, tape it down or whatever you want to do. Just put you know, whatever you want. By the way, you guys are the engineers, all right? And so anyway, uh, uh, the conversion from uh, inches to centimeters is perfect, perfect. Eight, 1888, they said from this day forward, 2.54, dee, 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 zero, 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 is equal to one inch, okay? So this centimeters. So uh, you can easily convert uh, eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. The long side's 11 inches. Okay, good. And then your instructor is gonna give you initial conditions. So once you get your data analyzed in video analysis, you can put it somewhere on the, on the uh, where t equals zero, it's like located at minus, uh, let's say 34 centimeters. Uh, the other one was at t equals zero is located at positive 56 centimeters. So then you can actually have these two objects moving in opposite directions and predict where they're gonna crash. Now, unfortunately, we can't actually conduct that in our lab because we, it's, we, don't, have it, we don't have the cars, okay? So it's hard to reconstruct that doing it at home. So basically all you're gonna do is a calculation. I believe one of your cat problems is that calculation. So we probably won't even have you put it in your lab report. But that's it, that's the experiment. All right, so over and out.